My name is Bryony Davison and I'm a Field Officer for Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. And I'm Ralph Connolly and I'm the Field Officer and Volunteer Coordinator for ARC. And we're standing here on Crooksbury Common, one of ARC's nature reserves here in the Weald. Crooksbury Common is a 20 hectare triple SI in southwest Surrey, just outside Elstead. It packs a lot into such a small site, however. We've got all six native species of reptiles here. And on this, the lowest lying area of the site, where it's a bit damper, we have breeding ponds for Nasjak toads. It's one of only three such populations here in Surrey and Hampshire. There are two species of toad in the UK, the common toad and the natterjack toad. And between them, they look quite different, so it's quite easy to identify natterjacks. Natterjacks are, are much smaller than common toads and they have shorter legs as well. And these short legs give them the name of the running toad, which is what they are called in folklore. Another difference between the two is the eye colour. Natterjacks have a, a golden eye, whereas common toads have a more orangey, dull coloured eye. And the main difference between the two is the yellow dorsal stripe running along the natterjack's back. Natterjacks favour early successional habitat. They like conditions as short and bare as are possible, as this helps them hunt their invertebrate prey. So we mow these areas here around the breeding ponds to keep them in that condition. They also like shallow breeding pools like this here. The shallowness of the water means that it heats up quickly in the spring, and the warmth of that water helps the tadpoles develop fast. All these habitat requirements mean that natterjacks are an endangered species, one protected under law. It means that they're very limited in the number of sites that they can live on, and require quite heavy management to keep those sites in good condition, like we carry out here on Crooksbury. In the spring, male natterjack toads will start looking for a mate. They will congregate around ponds like this and do a loud rasping call to try and attract the females towards them. Natterjack toads breed later in the year than common toads. This helps to avoid competition between the species. Natterjack toad tadpoles are much smaller and darker than their common compatriots. The, the toadlets also have the distinctive yellow line down their backs from a very early age. When conditions are right, natterjack toadlets can develop very quickly, and sometimes they have to. Because they live in ephemeral ponds, which dry up, the, the natterjacks need to be able to develop at quite a speed to be able to beat the drying up water. When they do become big enough, the toadlets will start to leave the pond, and this is when a little bit of cover around the outside of the pond comes in very handy. They will stay around the ponds for a little while, feeding and growing before they make their way off to a hibernation spot for the winter. Natterjacks are nocturnal, but during the day they will burrow into the sides of banks. This is also where they spend hibernation over winter. Crooksbury Common used to be a pine plantation. Lots of really tall pine trees and nothing much going on underneath. There were a few bits of relic heathland left behind. Um, an ARC took this site on, it was about 50 years ago, and as an organisation, we have created the amazing Heathland site we have here today. Absolutely. Managing a site like this takes a lot of work. So you can see we're standing here above some of the remnants of those great big pine trees that were growing on site. So this would have been felled decades ago and is still gradually rotting down. But when those pine trees were all on here, there would have been very little heather or other Heathland vegetation underneath. They just get shaded out. So a lot of the work that we've done either with volunteers or contractors or with the field team like myself and Bryony, has been to clear all those pines, keep the heathland open, keep it with plenty of spaces for reptiles and invertebrates to bask in. I mean, yeah, wildlife doesn't really thrive under a pine plantation, especially heathland wildlife. They, they need very specific conditions to live. And if the area gets too treed, too scrubby, then they, they won't live there very long. Bare ground like this is a vital component of the heathland ecosystem. It may look like a path, but this is actually something that we've put in artificially. We've dug over the vegetation to reveal the sand underneath, and that gives a substrate for a whole range of different invertebrate species and other animals to, to thrive in. Yeah, indeed. Um, so the sort of things that will use this open sand, uh, specifically sand lizards, which we manage for, they use open sand to dig burrows to lay their eggs in. And solitary wasps and mining bees will dig burrows here as well. And natterjack toads also, they, they'll use this open area to, to run along and find their prey. 
And all this underlines the point that managing a heathland for reptiles and amphibians can have great knock-on benefits for a whole range of other species.